great and wonderful day everyone ang iyong lingkod Genesis the Yos sharing with you again about helpful bible verses for long distance relationship God cares about you and your long distance relationship and he is spoken to you through his word his words written in the bible promise joy in sadness truth in uncertainty and hope in discouragement I know because reading the Bible gave me both comfort and clarity when my husband and I dated long distance. I didn't find every answer I was looking for, but I discovered Christ and He was all I needed. The Bible verses for long distance relationships can encourage you to seek Christ in this difficult season, but don't stop there. Open a Bible and read the row. Thoughts of Love's author, and call out in prayer that you would know him more. Number one, why distance hurts? In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Number two, finding comfort in Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 7 says, Blessed be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ, we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. Number three, Waiting with hope. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 26 says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. It is good that one should wait patiently, quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Number four, sovereignty in suffering. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse 31 to 33 says, For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not afflict from his heart or grieve the children of men. Number 5. Together while apart. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 5 says, For though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. Number 6. Description of love. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 to 7, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boss. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Number 7. Laboring for Love Genesis chapter 29 verse 20 says, so Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to, he, to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Number eight, taking your relationship is slowly. In Proverbs chapter 19 verse 2 says, Desire without knowledge is not good, and whoever makes haste with his feet misses his way. Number nine, where hope is found. In Romans chapter 8 verse 18 and 24 to 25, For I consider that the sufferings of, his, 
of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed in us. Now, hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Number 10. The meaning of marriage in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21 to 23. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ, wives, submit to your own husbands as the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one even ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her as husband. Number 11, Waiting for Awakened Desire In Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 7, I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, for the gazelles, or the, or the dust of the field that you not stir up or awaken love until it pleases. Number 12. Purity of Body In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 and 7, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Ch Number 13. Purity of Heart Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 Keep all your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Number 14 Purity of mind In Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Number 15. Reveal Christ by your conduct. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Number 16. Be passionate about righteousness. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23, 22. So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Number 17. The purifying power of trials. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. In this you rejoice, though now fall a little while, if necessary you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Number 18. Refraining from complaining. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 14, do all things without grumbling or disputing. Number 19. Waiting for God. In Psalms chapter 2, 27 verse 14 Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Number 20 What to do while you're waiting? 
In Romans chapter 12, verse 12, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Number 21, Fixing your eyes on eternity. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, This light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all compar comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eter eternal. Number 22, the power of words. In Proverbs chapter 15 verse 1, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Number 23, the pace of words. In James chapter 1 verse 19 to 20, now this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Number 24, forgiving each other. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 13, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all this, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect. Number 25. Motivation of love. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 to 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. 26. Kingdom-minded living. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 17, look carefully when how you walk, not as unwise but as wise making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Number 27, Trusting in the Lord in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 7, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your way, acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes, Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Number 28. The value of seeking advice. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22, without counsel plans fail, but with many advisors they succeed. Number 29. For wisdom begins. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Number 30, Characteristics of Wise Decisions In James chapter 3, verse 17, But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. God bless everyone. Thank you for watching. See you on my next video.